master illusionist, man, has eaten in his career, five, no, 50,000 light bulbs. <laughs> so, so much so he'd eat a light dinner, I guess. But the man, <laughs> the man is, is on my show this week, by the way, on Bloomberg Radio. You can hear it over the weekend. And he's just, uh, he's a legend. He's got, it's been a hit Broadway show now called Play Dead. I can only tell you this is my personal idol, a cult figure. He's the one only, the amazing Mr. Todd Robbins. Oh, Todd thank Robbins. You, Thank you, Joe. Thank you. I, I want to be just like Joe Franklin when I grow up, but you can't do both. So, uh, good, good evening, everyone. My, my name is Todd Robbins, and it is a, a pleasure and honor and a contractual obligation to be here tonight uh, for the, the, uh, this event honoring uh, this wonderful new book that uh, Drew has put out. If you haven't gotten a copy of it, you really should. It is a wonderful book of sideshow performers. And the reason I'm here is because of the connection I have to uh, a wonderful man who graces the cover. His name was Melvin Burkhardt. And uh, Melvin was an amazing performer. He was really the last of his generation. And he passed away uh, on November 8th, uh, 2001 at the age of 94. And he was quite an innovator uh, and an inspiration to several generations of performers, including yours truly. I, I was very proud to say that I was a good friend of Melvin's. And uh, he, well, I, I'll just, just explain. Uh, his last performance was actually at my wedding, which was October 8th, 2001, in which he did his sideshow act that he had been doing since 1929, and uh, when he passed away at, uh, in November, uh, November 8th, one month later, uh, a couple weeks later I got a package in the mail, and in it was Melvin's props, it was sent to me by his widow, and then two weeks later I got Melvin, uh, the, his cremated ashes were sent to us with the uh, instructions that we sprinkle him out in Coney Island because that was the last sideshow he had worked. Uh, last full sideshow season was out in Coney Island back in the late 80s. So on a, a blustery day in February and what would have been his 95th birthday, uh, Dick Ziggin and uh, myself and a few other people went out on the Steeplechase Pier and sprinkled the ashes of um, Melvin Burkhardt. Uh, so, the, the reason, like I say, I'm here is because I want to sort of pay tribute and give you a little sense of what Sideshow is all about. It's very hard to find a Sideshow. We're very lucky in that we have Sideshows by the seashore out in Coney Island. Uh, he's still going strong, 26th season now. And uh, I'd say Melvin used to work there, and he did an act that is actually, uh, part of it is depicted on the book. It's uh, captured so brilliantly by Drew Friedman. Uh, and it, it was a, a part of an act called the anatomical wonder, in which he would do all kinds of strange contortions. He'd breathe through Melvin, breathe through one lung at a time, and he would do something called the two-faced man. And Melvin taught it to me, and it's on the book there, like I say, on the cover and also on the inside. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do sort of uh, what he taught me. It's a very simple act. If anyone has ever had, said to you that you're two-faced, I guess you should look like this. I'm going to show you why they call me the two-faced man. It's a very simple act. Let me just do this. Let me just... I'm just warming up. And this is why they call me the two-faced man. That's why they call me the two-faced man. But really what Melvin was known for, mostly, was uh, in 1929, he took a torture stunt from the fake years of India, and he turned it into a joyously gut-wrenching act that was called the Human Blockhead. And he was the original, and I think he was the best. And I'm just going to show you why uh, they, I like to call myself a Human Blockhead. It's a very simple act. It just uses some nails, a hammer, which was Melvin's, and this young lady right here. What is your name? Mary, Mary, let's all say hi, Mary. Hi. Mary, say hi to everyone. Hello. Now, Mary, there's one more thing I'm going to need. One more thing I'm going to need just to dress the act. It's important. One thing I've learned from Joe Franklin is you got to flash the act out. So let's use, let's use Melvin's hat, the one that he wore when he did this in the sideshow. It's very, very simple, Mary. What I want you to do is just select one of the nails and hold it up 
for everyone to see. That, my friends, that is a six inch, 60 penny nail. You can all see by the teeth marks, I bite my nails. Bite my nails! It's just like comedy. <laughs> now what I want you to do, Mary, is I want you to prove to everyone that that's six inches of solid steel. I know some guys have tried to tell you that's 12 inches, but no, 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 no. So Mary, what I want you to do is just hit it on the head of the hammer there so everyone can hear it's nice and solid. And then hold it up, Mary, and show that it doesn't collapse or fold like that. Ooh. Babylon, Zena. Now, I'm going to take that back there, if I may, and I'm going to ask you two very important questions, uh, Mary. First off, some people think I invite my friends in here, and this has all been done by collusion. It's all been set up. Seriously, we haven't met before? No. Yeah. You seem so damn pleased about that. <laughs> and second and most important, does this nail collapse or fold in any way? No. I'm glad you said that, because some people might not believe it when I take the nail and using the hammer, I hammer the nail into my nose. Oh, my, <laughs> my mother's so proud I finally got a job. Let me just warm up here. Yeah, here we go. And it's called the blockade because you have to be a complete blockade to do something as dangerous as this. And if there are any children in the audience, children, don't go home and try this. Wait till you get to school. <laughs> they got nurses there. Oh, oh, oh! It's a lovely night. Let's go for a drive and see how far I can. Uh, I take it. The nail's real, the hammer's real, it's the head that's fake. <laughs> and look at the women cringing. Look at the women cringing. I'll let you know something personal. I'm single. <laughs> that actually is the one lie in the whole act. The fact of the matter is, I am married. Yeah, yeah, someone married me. And we have a kid, yeah. I'm somebody's father. <laughs> but the best thing about being a hammer and a nail in my nose is I ride the subways. And the first thing I do when I get in the subway car is I hammer a nail into my nose. And no matter how crowded it is, I always get a seat. Sometimes I get the whole car to myself. And it's funny, no one wants to talk to you about Jesus when you have a nail hammered in your nose. And I have no fear of being mugged. If anyone bothered me, I'd look them straight in the eye and say, Punk, if I sneezed right now, I'd kill you. And then I'd nail him. Nail him! It's just... No. Moving right along here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this out here. Mary, do you want to pull it out? You, you get to make a wish when you pull it out. Okay, come on up here, Mary. Now, be, be very gentle. What I want you to do is just kind of grab hold of it, and I'll kind of back out. You, you, you don't really need to pull, and you sure as hell don't need to push. Okay, Mary? So just, just grab hold of it. Be very gentle, because some people have like a, a brain up there. So just, just be very gentle. Be very gentle, Mary. Very gentle. Very gentle. Ah! No, 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 Oh, thank you. Let's hear it from Mary. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I thought it, uh, because of lighting here, I thought there was blood on there, but it's not. <laughs> no, that's some jokes. You like look and run in the court. Lay it down, it's dirty. Let me clean this off. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, I know that bothers a lot of people. I've seen these same cringing faces over and over again. So I just want to do one last little thing here before I, I, uh, I get off the stage here and bring on the real talent. And the, uh, the real show starts here. And by the way, I, unfortunately, I would love to stay around here, but I'm running downtown to do uh, my show Play Dead. Now at the Players Theater. Uh, so we had a lot of fun putting that show together. Uh, Teller and I wrote it, and he directed it. And, uh, Teller and I, we, we met in prison. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to do something with a little balloon, because every, and let me back me up on this. Everyone loves balloons, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen a, someone take one of these and put a few twists and turns in it and turn it into a cute little doggy? Yeah. I don't do that. Because I don't know how. I only know one balloon animal, one balloon figure. Let me do it for you here. And that's it. That's the only one I know how to do. It's a tadpole. Yeah. So now that's the only balloon animal I know how to do. But here's one other thing I can do with a balloon. If I go like that, calm down. And I go like this. And I go like this. And I do it one more time. It means nothing. But it does allow me to go like this. And go like this. <laughs> and go like this. Yeah. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs> Wait, it gets better.
ladies and gentlemen, that is what's kept me out of the big time all these years. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Drew. And enjoy the rest of the evening. So long, folks. Good night.